Hey, today we're doing a repair on a Ford Territory 2007 model. Got the six speed ZF 6HP 26 transmission in it. What's happening, it's stuck in limp mode. We're just going to put the scanner on it and just see if we can get any fault codes out of it. We're just idling at the moment. The P's flashing on there indicating that there's some problem there. The way I know it's in limp mode is if, if I go into park and flick it into the sport shift and move it up and down, it's always showing up as third gear. So you can see, it doesn't matter if I go up or down, it's still showing third gear. And I've got a PO973 shift solenoid A. There are a few other codes there. We're just concerned with the powertrain and the transmission codes. So we've got And we've got a P1000 and a P1479. I've just loosened the bolt on this cross frame there and I take the other three off and just swing it out of the way like that. And I've drained the oil. It's a 10 mil Allen key. Just let the oil drain out. And I've taken all the bolts off except for two on the pan there, T40 Torx. So the code we're getting is solenoid A, which is this one here. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a complete change of all the solenoids on it. So to get the valve body off, first we need to take out the little mechatronic plug there, or the connector plug. So we just flip that up, you just slide that up slowly like that, and it just pops out. And then there's a little fork that locates that plug, just so it doesn't wiggle around. And what you do is you just press this little button here, and it slides down. And that fork comes out of that plug. And then hopefully you've cleaned around that plug before you take it out. And then you can just wriggle it out. And there we go. This comes out quite easily. Worth replacing that connector sleeve as well. And now we're just going to take off all the T40 Torx bolts. And that valve body will just come down. And you can see I've left two bolts, one bolt either side of the valve body. And that, that's just ready to come out now. I've got the valve body off and I've already noticed there's a problem there. If you have a look here, there's what's called a bridge seal and that's actually, the rubber's actually come out and it's on top of the valve body. We're going to also replace all these little sealing tubes. Is there stuck on there? Oh. It either fell out or was a little bit stuck there. So I'll just drain this out a little bit and then we can take this mechatronic unit out. 
And here we have the Atra Bulletin on the 6HP26 and the 6R60. There's the clutch application chart. And if you have a look on, there's the location for the air pressure tests for those clutches. That little bridge seal comes here. And you've got those little tube seals, four little tube seals that come through there. And here are the solenoid application chart for the same transmission and you've got the identification of the numbers there which solenoid corresponds to which clutch one that we've got the code for is the A solenoid which is applied in first second third and fourth if you know there but I'd suspect that some of the other ones are faulty as well. So the owners opted, instead of bench testing all the solenoids, we're going to replace the whole lot. Got a, a genuine ZF uh, solenoid set here for the same unit. Um, I haven't really tried the aftermarket ones, but I've heard that they can give you trouble, so... That's why we try and stick to the genuine ZF. And you can see that the different colours there will match the different solenoids there on the valve body. And there's also a little instruction sheet there for you if you need it. Got to get the mechatronic unit off. It's already, we've already taken off these three bolts. And the other bolts that we need to remove are these two here, one, two. These two here, where the selector is, one, two. And two more, these two. So two, four, and six, six bolts we need to remove. And then we can take that mechatronic unit and replace these solenoids. There's a warning on these that if you hit them with a bit of static can damage the mechatronics on it. So what you have is these little wristbands where you clip it to the to the valve body what, that you're working on. Uh, we don't actually use it very often. Um, our bench is actually equipped for it. But just be aware that static will damage the mechatronic unit. And there you go show you again which bolts one two three four five six flip the valve body over you can actually see the location of where those bolts are anyway so it'll it'll give you an indication where they are if you can't make out from what I've just shown you and now we just wriggle this just very carefully without getting any static anywhere uh, wriggle the mechatronic part off off the solenoids if the mechatronics haven't been off for a while you, it'll be stuck on these two pins so you can we have this little bent screwdriver and we just lever it up slowly and evenly um, it's got to come off evenly off those two pins and off the solenoids and there it is So now use the, the same Torx T27 to get this little bracket off so you can get the solenoids out. It's also a good idea to just make a note of uh, what colour goes where or you can take a photo with, of it on your phone. Always a good idea to make little videos when you're working on things that you're unfamiliar with. Some people number them. I've loosened them all. And then they just wriggle out like so. There we go. These O-rings also flatten out or harden. You lose pressure in there as well. And these solenoids, if, if you were going to test them, uh, you actually have to 
test them with a vacuum instead of pressure. So I'll just pop all those out. Get a little bit tight. Very tight. Now one important thing I forgot to mention on these, there are quite a few different types of ZF transmissions for those, the 6HP26. You need to make sure you're ordering the solenoids for the correct unit. And there'll be a number 1068. And if you have a look up here, And if you can see that, there's a little code there and it's an 020058. That's the actual important number to quote when you're ordering these solenoids for these units. Matched up the solenoids. They actually came in blue instead of the green colour. So whether that's stained from the oil, I'm not sure. But anyway, just make sure you order the right ones for this particular transmission. And you can see those little contacts. You need to mesh them up with this. Just make a visual inspection. Make sure they're not oxidised or corroded or bent out of shape. So I'm just going to push all these in. They have to be 90 degrees to the valve body. So you can get all these back in. And what I also like to do before before you tighten the solenoids up with the little bracket is put that mechatronic unit back on um, just to make sure these are uh, meshed in properly and then you can tighten all these up in. don't just force them in sometimes it can damage the seal or cut the seal on the solenoid so what I do I put pressure on it and just wiggle it around like that and it should just pop in Sometimes you might need to rotate a little bit, and there we go. All these are in. I'm going to put the mechatronic unit back on. I'll put this uh, plate on just loose, and then we can uh, tighten it up after. You can see that they, they're they able to swivel around a little bit. You want to ideally get the contact as, as good as you can on the on those little terminals. Don't forget to line up your little selector shaft there as well. I still haven't tightened them up yet. I'm just going to put the bolts back in the mechatronics. There. There we go, that's sitting nicely now, give those a bit of a wriggle, just make sure they're sitting in properly, and also don't forget your selector, that's got to slot into that little pin there as well. And we tighten up those bolts to 6 newton metre, which is basically 50 inch pound, 50 inch pound or there we go, 6 newton metre or 50 inch pound. Just getting it close first. Okay, now we can tighten these up and they tighten up to 6 newton meter or 50 inch pound as well. Now 
Now just quickly, like I mentioned earlier, you have to test them with vacuum to make sure they're not leaking. I'll just quickly just show you, um, we've got about, oh today's about 18 degrees here, so 5, five ohms resistance on these and 10, in, 10 ohms resistance at roughly 20 degrees Celsius. So like I said, we're a little bit under that here today at room temperature and I'm just going to run through. This one here is the Shift A solenoid or Shift A clutch solenoid. So we know that one is faulty from our scanner. So I'll just check all the other ones and just see what we're getting out of them anyway. And that one's about 5.7. This one should be about 10. 10.8. Yep. Five point six. Five point six. Five point six seven. And the faulty one. There we go, we've got nothing there. Open circuit. So the coil's probably broken inside there. It's got nothing. And you can see there is a, even when I just do it like that, there is a bit of resistance there. But it's always important to, to be familiar with your ohm meter as well. So even though they're a little bit higher than these ones, don't look too bad, just che checking the resistance. To test them properly, you need to actually heat them up or warm them up to make sure they don't short out under heat. But this one's definitely open circuit or faulty. And because they are all, well, they're all working at the same rate, that's why it's probably a better idea while we've doing all this work to just replace a whole lot instead of just that one but if you were doing that you could just replace this one here and get away with it a bit cheaper I'm going to replace this bridge seal and that just pops out like that you can see the other seals stuck on there as well and these tube seals here you can just tap a bolt or a screw in there and just pull them out well, there's the old bridge seal. You can see what the new one looks like. And the sleeves, you notice one is 31.5 mil, one's 40 mil. And two will be 26 mil. I'm just going to do a quick air pressure test. Uh, we've got the A clutch over here. You can hear that's applying well. Next to that's the E clutch. Same thing. We got the B clutch. You can actually see it applying in there, over here. This one's the D2 and that one's a release so you won't hear anything and the C clutch. I've got the seals out, tube seals and you can see this one's flattened out what's that 38.96 or so 39 mil and it should be 40 mil. And this other one should be 
31.5, we've got 29.9 or say 30 mil. And the final two should be 26 mil. We've got 24.66. So what that tells us is that when the valve body's bolted down, there's no pressure there on that rubber. Also, the rubber's hardened a little bit. It's a good idea to replace these if you want to avoid having uh, pressure like there between the, the valve body and the case. The bridge seal, you can see how raised those rubbers are. 29.37 mil. 18.5 There's like 2 mil They flattened out by about 2 mil on that smaller hole And heaps on the other one 3 mil Longest one That one there Short one Short one, and the second longest one. You can see how much they're sticking out there. And we've got the bridge seal. There we go, when that's bolted up, that'll seal beautifully. Old body up, make sure you align it with this little selector linkage as well. A little bit tricky getting it up. You got to align this up as well. Yep, on the selector. Always try and get it up as evenly as you can and we're going to tension these up to 8 newton metre and 8 newton metre is about 70 inch pound still got to put these three bolts in as well and I've got the case connector plug good idea to smear a bit of oil on there and just make a note of that little little pin in there that's got to line up when you're pushing it in. If you can't push the little fork in there properly it means it hasn't gone in deep enough. You can actually feel when it goes that little slot falls in place you'll just feel it sort of pull in and now I've got to just push it slowly with two hands because um, there are two seals that have to be pushed in there. And now we can just slide that back in. There we go. We just slide the plug back in. And that goes in like so. You need a have a little bit of pressure on there as you wind it down and it'll just pull it pull itself back in and they'll, you'll feel a little click at the bottom and that's it check that nothing's gone inside that tube when you get it off double check that the o-rings on there as well and this just pushes back up straight in there Good idea to put a little bit of oil on that seal. We're on the Tritec site. Uh, you can see Ford Territory, we've got a 2007 model, all-wheel drive, and automatic transmission, 
The preferred one is the ATF Synthetic Low Viscosity, or you can also use the ATF Multitrans Full Synthetic Fluid. I'm topping it up with some Tritec Low Viscosity Fluid. You can see it's equivalent to the Lifeguard 6 or the ZF Lifeguard 6 fluid. Basically you take this little plug out and fill it up till it's just trickling out. Hop up into the vehicle, just start it for literally 10 seconds, turn it off and then come and top it up again and then you can keep the motor running and top it up. On these there is a sticker on the side that actually says oil filling temperature 30 to 50 degrees so make sure it's within that range. If it goes over you need to let the transmission cool down and check it at those temperatures. The reason being is that the oil expands with heat so you want to have it um, at the correct temperature so it hasn't expanded and it'll come all that expanded oil will come out and then your fluid level will be too low. Just before I start it, I've put about two and a half litres in in the transmission. Before I even start it for 10 seconds, I'm just going to clear any codes that are on it. There's a code there. I'll just make sure it's still the same one. I haven't started the car, so shift solenoid A. Erase codes. This done. And I'll also do it, check it on the other one. Yes. Yes. Okay. You can start the vehicle now. Literally start it for 10 seconds. Okay, we can top it up now. You can see the, the park on the dash wasn't flashing either. And now I'm going to pump in probably another two or three litres until it just starts trickling out of there. Four litres have gone in. I can start the vehicle now and keep it running and then we'll just top it up until it's just leaking out of there. And we can keep it going now. Handbrake on hard. You can see the park's not flashing. We're just going to go, I've got my foot on the brake as well. Select the gears a few times. Over to the sport shift. And you can see we've got first gear. And that's looking good already. Back in the park and we can go down and check the oil level. Okay, and it's just coming out, just started dribbling, and we're on about 37 degrees, which is ideal. Uh, we can just put the plug back in, you can see that's just streaming down slightly. And we can put the cross bracket back on. There we go, back from test run. Everything's changing okay. Uh, the little P's not flashing anymore. You can see, no limp mode anymore. The shifts are a little bit funny, but over probably the next 100 kilometers, the, train, well, the computer will relearn all the parameters, the electrical parameters, and that'll improve over the next 100 Ks. Anyway, I hope that's helped. Thank you for watching.